Let's carry on with some of the requests. And another request is Northeast Bank listed on the NASDAQ. And immediately, I mean, investors are just saying, listen, we must be in the market. But for me, if I look at this chart, it had one wonderful rally. Remember, this is a weekly chart, of course, because um, the email to me was, Franz, I would like to hold on to the share for the long term, especially five years plus. And um, for me, it was quite interesting when I read that because uh, to hold just a share for five years plus, then you've got such a long view. You actually need some nice pullbacks to just buy the share and just hold on to it because then you must believe in the company, the fundamentals of the company, the directors, what they do, uh, the dividend that they're going to pay out. You must be happy with it. So for me, I mean, we had such a rally here from 2020, from $9 all the way up to $42. For me, I'm looking at this chart and I immediately do this long-term support line. Uh, this support line tells me that the momentum is still beautiful in, intact. But the only thing that worries me, and I mean, I will not accumulate now because what do I see? I see a beautiful rising wedge here that's developing. And if this line breaks below 37.17, um, de definitely this, this um, investor doesn't want to sell, he wants to hold on. I'll wait for it to play out. It will probably go back to $31.70 if it pulls back. And then I will just buy. And you know what? I, I've got a client that's a reader with us for, I think, 20 years plus. And he never sells a share. And um, in actual fact, he's such a long-term investor. He waits for pullbacks. He, he's got some money or some spare cash that he's got. And then when the market collapses 2%, 3% a day, then he's got a tiny list. And he will phone me and he will say, listen, Franz, out of these four shares, technically, which one is the most oversold? Which one is close to a support? And I will maybe say, OK, this is Northeast Bank. It's close to a support. And then he will just say, thank you so much. I think I'm going to add on to them a little bit. And I mean, that is his profile. His profile is he's a long term investor. He doesn't bother about the market if it goes up or down. He just wants places to buy. And this investor that wants to keep the share for five years, wait for this pullback, buy it, and hopefully it never comes back to that old lever of $10. Um, but I mean, if you've got a really long-term um, view on a chart, then find places to buy. Then you don't need to sell. That's not me. I'm not that pro. I haven't got that profile. But for you, if it works, just stick to that plan. Let us look at HNI Corporation, also listed on the New York Stock Exchange. I mean, the chart is definitely showing us that it's starting to run out of steam. The momentum is clearly to the downside. And um, I mean, this viewer wants to buy. And this is a weekly chart. So I'm going to look at a, a nice chart here. I'm going to draw that line in there. There's the resistance line. And I will not touch the share until this line into a support. It's quite simple. You just wait for it to come back. And where can it go to? I mean, there's a support line at 32.29. It can actually go down to 28.85. Maybe by then it will be nicely oversold. But I see a little bit of a tweezer bottom here. I just want to show you there's the tweezer bottom. And don't be surprised if this chart just goes all the way back to this level. And that is sitting at $27.92. Maybe you're lucky to catch it there. But, uh, for me, momentum down, not place to buy. Let's see if it can get to that tweezer bottom. There's some nice strong support. And then we'll look at the chart again. This is now the typical company that you just buy on weakness. And that is Coca-Cola. I mean, look at this. In May 2020, it collapsed to $38. From there, it worked hard all the way up and it went to 65 and yes, I'm going to show you here that the, the trend line all the way from 2020 has just uh, been broken. It can easily go down. And there's a high and there's a lower high. So for the short term investor, the investor that's happy to lock in his profits, he will be very happy to see by Friday to say, I've made some nice money. It broke this resistance, this support line. It's now a resistance. I'm locking in my profit. For the other investor, like that person that wants to, to buy Northeast Bank. That guy will say to myself, so will say to himself, I'm not going to sell. I'm going to wait for a proper pullback and I'll buy it again. And this is the difference. Coca-Cola, always, I always uh, get this note in my mind and I say to myself, can the company go under? 
like Coca-Cola. Is there a good chance that Coca-Cola can go under? And for me, if I think about it and if I reason about it, I say Coca-Cola will not probably just go under. Yes, it can experience some problems. Yes, some guys can maybe copy their product or sell it. I cannot just see that the company can just go under. So for me, I will wait for it to pull back. I'll find a place where it finds support and then I'll buy it. But at this point in time, unfortunately for me, it's not a, a share that I want to accumulate because it's testing the support line. It's making a lower high. I like, don't like that. So for me, wait for it to get sold off and then you get back into to buy it. But at the moment, enjoy the ride if you had it. And if you're a short-term investor, maybe time to think about locking in some profit. Leave the cash on the side and when it's ready again, then you just jump in back and you buy it. Because you can always buy it back. Nobody forces you just to hold a share. You can always bank it, the profit and then buy it back if you want to do so later. Let us look at 3M. I mean, this is a massive company. I mean, they are a giant player in the industrial world. And what do you see here? And this is now typical. You get some companies that is wonderful companies and that you like the company. They can come under pressure. Look at 1918. Can you believe that, that this share was at around $258 then? Since then, it lost a lot of momentum to 2020 to 124. It gave a beautiful bounce all the way up to 206, and now it's losing momentum, and it wants to go lower. And in actual fact, it's on the point of making a brand new low, and there you are. There's the brand new low. And while it is below this level of 125.12, it can actually go lower. And that is the point. Why do you want to buy it? But this is the important lesson here. Even if you like the company, even if you believe that nothing can go wrong, at that point in time, I can bet you a dollar when this share was at around 260, there was not a blink of problems in the fundamentals. Everything was fine. They probably paid a dividend. The share was on a new all-time high. The directorship was happy about the company. They were happy about the future prospects of the company. But since then, things changed. So for me, that's why I haven't got the super long-term view. And by the way, I'm already not. <laughs> it makes me think about someone. I've got a client that's in his 90s. And when he phones me, he doesn't want to read the newsletters anymore. He just phones me. And then he says to me, Franz, what is nicely oversold and what can I buy? And then I will say, um, I'm thinking about the share and said, Please don't give me a share with a three or a four week view. Why? Because by then I can be dead already. So for me personally, if you look at this company, wait for it to finish to drop off. And then you look at an entry point. For me, unfortunately, while it is below this support line, it is not positive. Um, I will do this and I will say to the viewer, let's wait patiently for this line to turn back into a support. And that will probably be only above $133. So for the moment, just sit on your hands. Don't buy it. In actual fact, I've picked up now three shares here of viewers. It was 3M, it was Coca-Cola and that um, Northeast uh, Bank that is right at the top. And it shows you that there's something uh, very strong happening there on those shares. But on this one, 3M, one of the top companies in the world, starting to struggle. That always makes me a little bit worried. Let us look at this share, Mass Megawatts Wind Power. I mean, everybody's rushing back into coal now. <laughs> because two years ago, with all the ESG stories and, and it's, it's, it's green energy and this and that and the other, um, they just say, listen, it is coal is... You, you will not use that anymore. You don't want it. You don't want petrol. Um, and then suddenly the companies with the, with, that gives you the alternative energy, they were flying. But that changed around. And look what happened when they turned around. They went from three cents to almost 32 American cents um, in a matter of a few weeks. But now it's right at the bottom. So for me, if you want a nice turnaround story, this is maybe one of the shares that you need to look at because the the uh, product will come in demand again. Although it is it's a it's a share that's trading on two American cents, it can easily go under. But I think if you want to buy it, and for me it's a speculative buy, I will only buy it when it gets above three American cents. My stop loss must be zero because it can go north. And um, this is now the kind of share that you buy a little bit off. And you hold on to it, and if you're wrong, you're wrong, and if, you, if you're right, it goes all the way up, and you make a lot of money. So for me, speculative buy, 
Um, it's alternative energy, and maybe it can turn around, but not at the moment because everybody is rushing first to coal. And remember, we've got a, a winter in America coming up in Europe as well, so everybody will just uh, build up some energy, and they will not worry about green energy until next year when the summer comes. And then maybe these companies can maybe pick up nicely again. And let's end off with um, a coal company, Self32. And it just shows you, I mean, nice pullback from 58, 38, all the way down to 39, 60, and immediately it starts to go up. And for me, it looks like it, it's heading for this resistance line. I, I sometimes use a resistance line always, always to give me a little bit of a target if the share starts to rally. Um, so for those guys that's got the share that, that bought it nicely when it was quite low, let's just uh, draw that line in there. I just want to get it in there. You can maybe come back all the way to 51.85 from 49 now. So there's about two rand still on the go. For me, I think you may be a little bit late to buy it unless you're a momentum buyer. Where can you buy it? Yes, you can buy it when it breaks that little line there. Uh, there's that. Remember, this is a weekly line, a weekly chart. I buy it above 49.82, target is 52, stop loss is 47.80, so there's about 2 rand, I mean it's a 5-6% rally. For guys that chase momentum, I mean 5-6% to 6 point, 6 rally in a matter of a few days, nothing wrong with that. For me, I'm always a little bit nervous, and this is now typical of a commodity company, rally it up, get tired, fall off the cliff, and then you need to find it right at the bottom, and sometimes it feels like you're catching a falling knife. But I mean, everybody loves coal at the moment, chase the momentum, it can maybe give you a nice bounce here, but I just think stick to your stop loss, because um, although coal is now in high demand, it can easily change. Um, sometimes it, uh, it changes before you know that, and then you burn your fingers. Well, thank you for visiting our website, www.franceclair.com, for more info, and thank you for sending in some requests.